Hey, today on the RMS channel, we're gonna do a deep dive on our maple syrup production. We're gonna start right at the tree, show you how we do our tapping, and then we're gonna get into the rest of it here, right, right down into boiling and bottling that product. Three teams tapping today, me and Clem, Marissa and Ange, Tommy and his buddy Brad, uh, we are gonna divide up and have everybody attack certain portions here and get after it. John bought, uh, sorry, my father-in-law John bought new bits this year. Last year, I understand we had some trouble with uh, some of our spouts getting plugged. So, uh, so we got some new bits that'll uh, aid in the tapping of the trees and uh, we're gonna get after it. Deep enough? Yep. First tap's done. Here comes my meathead dog. Right on cue. The new way now, we got drills, we got lines. Imagine coming up here and like Clem said, drilling these by hand with a hand crank. Or just driving spiles. Okay. And then having to come up here again every other day, twice a day, three times a day to haul the uh, haul the buckets down into this half house. Wow, I can only imagine the amount of work that it was. Had to be a labor labor of love. What do you got there? <laughs> it's a turkey feather. It's a tur you sure that's a turkey feather? It's too it's too early sure. in the year to be a fawn it feather. Be a fawn feather. It's too okay. much too early. It's too much snow. So, but there's plenty of turkey tracks. So. It's probably a, a, probably a turkey feather. You know, here's a flashback now to the, the fawn feather thing. <laughs> turkey? No, the does just had their fawns. Let's, let's see how fluffy it is. It's a fawn feather? Yeah. Okay. So you smell it. Smell it. Yeah. It smells like a fawn, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah that's, okay. that's, I didn't know fawns had feathers. It's like a dinosaur? Well, they lose them all, like they're spots, you know? Got it. Okay, well, what, then how, let me ask you this. The one over there that I almost stepped on? What, just now? Yeah. <laughs> Probably came off of him. There you go. All right. All right. So now, I'm going to spile down to the line. I want it as straight as possible. I want it down here. Even if this is up here, I don't want it to have to come back uphill. That's kind of bad example, but if you put it up here like this, it's all going down. Hey, there's another fawn feather for oh, you. Oh, that's a nice one. Hey. Yeah, that one's really young. Are you sure that we're not, oh. we don't have fawns dropping already? It, it's awful early, but that that's a young one right there. <laughs> you can tell because of the fluff and because it's a little bit dark on the tips, and it's nice and white down here to match the snow. <laughs> All right, so everybody understands what we're talking about here. Clem's under the impression that when fawns are first drop in May, covered with feathers, they got feathers, yep. like like dinosaurs did. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I evolved from something, right? So let me know when you see one. This is the main line, as we like to say. You've got a wet line and a vacuum line. Your vacuum draws it down. Speaking of vacuum. What's up there, bud? The vacuum line draws its stuff down to the sap house, and uh, one guy can run it. When it warms up like this quick in February, you see the stuff coming out of the water, fresh water? That's a bullfrog in there that the sun hit it. It was hibernating, and it exploded, and all that mud shoots up out of the bank. You see that a lot of times on these little creeks. It's only when it's really, really warm on a day in, in February. No, it's not that. We're down to the last one on our line. We've done all through there and up through there. Now, Tom and Brad. Brad. 
they worked their way all the way across the mountain. The girls worked down that side on the brook side and back up. So we, we've got two, there's six of us, three teams, about six man hours. But well, we're six hours into it, so six times six, that's 36 man hours right there. It's been a long day, I tell you. Through the snow. It took us like an hour. Shut up. Tom's about to do the last one. Okay. So unless we miss something, that's everything. So now, you being the new guy, yeah. so you get to be a greenhorn because you've done one part of the process. Okay, when you get to be, you, when you come down and you, and you run the arch and you bottle, then you get to be a full share. Okay? Marissa, which, where, what level at are you at? I'm full share. She's full share now. She's full share. Yep. Okay, so good. So yeah, where's so. My, where's my Girl Scout Down badge? <laughs> Not my sash. All right, so we've, seen, we've talked about our tapping process and you guys have seen that. So what we've got, we've got a 5 16 inch drop line that comes down into the same size, okay? And all of that's run down to our main line. Now, uh, we get down to the sap house, we'll give you an idea or we'll show you what that stuff is, but that's all done with either gravity or in this case, we've got a vacuum system that we've set up and we'll give you guys a look at that as well. So you can see we've got all of our lines here set up. We've got about 350 taps set up here in our sugar bush. And uh, we're gonna give you a look at what that looks like. Like I said, we can run this all gravity. Uh, we do have a vacuum system set up and, and we're gonna give you another look here in a minute at uh, how it comes off the mountain and uh, down into the house. So you can see our lines come off of the mountain here and they head into the tower. We're gonna go up there and I'm gonna show you our vacuum setup and how that works. And uh, hopefully we'll see it release. So before we head up into the tower and check out the releaser, we've gotta go up onto the mountain and do a quick repair on one of the lines. All right, I've got a spot here that's got a, a, a nick in it and I'm losing a little bit of vacuum. So I'm gonna cut that out uh, and then I'm gonna use a, a junction uh, here on my 5 16th line. releaser here and all of our lines come off of the mountain and everything gets collected here we've got about a 350 gallon tank that this dumps into and then everything runs into the sap house into one into another tank and that gets filtered and then into the arch and we're going to show you all that process here in just a second So we run about 25 pounds of pressure, 20 to 25 pounds. Those repairs that you just saw us make changed our pressure here from about 15 to about 20, like I said 20, 25. So all of that helps us get a little bit more vacuum pressure. Come on, let's go look at the other stuff inside. All right, we've got a 136 gallon tank that, that collects all of the stuff coming out of the tower. We've got a filter on that, everything comes in and then it's all gravity fed. There's levels on the outside of our flue pan here. And this is our first process where we're starting to boil off our sap. So our water boils off and our sugar content increases as we get to the front here. We've got 
everything's connected in these three pans. And as the sugar content increases, it pushes to the front. By the time we get to this front pan, I'm at 218 degrees, I've got syrup. Well, part of it right now, and like, it just smells so freaking good. Um, now we just wait, all right? Ann shook off uh, the stuff, the, the syrup, and that's cooking in the other room until we get to the point where we're exactly where we want to be to bottle it. Um, so we're, temperature-wise right now, we're like 212, and we need to get it up to 218. So until that time, it's just feed the arch and uh, keep it hot. So at 218 degrees, we open this valve and my syrup trickles out of that front pan. We've got a couple of filtration steps here before we bottle it. Once right here at the arch, we transfer it into this stainless steel pan. We dump it into a finishing pan where it gets filtered again. And then it gets cooked from there, depending on barometric pressure, anywhere from 218 to 220. When this little hydrometer floats to that top mark, we know we've got the syrup exactly where we want it and it's 100% perfect. And we can see that that's, you have to take my word for it, it's syrup. So once that's done, we grade it using a New Hampshire grading kit. And uh, I can tell by looking at this one before I even put it in the kit that this is dark, robust, with very strong taste. You want my opinion? This is the best one right there. So the last step is, strangely enough, bottling it up. So you just open that little valve there on the end of the finishing pan and fill your quart, your half gallon, your pint, those little pain in the ass cordial bottles that we give away at wedding favors and Christmas stockings. Put the grade sticker on there and call it good. So people do ask us, uh, what do you do about cleaning it and things like that? Doesn't it get sticky everywhere? And really the, the bottom line is, no, it doesn't get sticky everywhere. The finishing pan gets a little sticky and that has to be clean, but we use hot sap or hot water. We don't use soap. No soap, so bad. Anything, anything like that can impart um, flavors outside of, of what you're doing. You want to keep this stuff as pure as we can, unless of course you're, you know, aging in bourbon barrels or something like that. So if you see this out there and, and you've got bourbon barrels, comment below and we'll see if we can hook up and I'll get one of your barrels to age my stuff in. So that's our process. Uh, you know, right from. You know, tapping the trees in late winter to, uh, you know, boiling the final product here in the spring. As I uh, pointed out in the other video, when you start, it's winter, and you when it's done, it's spring. So that's kind of cool that we're at that point in the year. It'll just be a little bit of time, and we'll be out chasing turkeys out in the uh, out in the fields here. So. Appreciate you guys checking us out. And if you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.